Okay, it's uh, December 30th, 5.22 a.m. Uh, I haven't done a cat's video in a couple of days. Uh, I just wasn't able to get around to it. But, um... So, um, I lost my, um, oh, so I go to the, uh, the food bank this Saturday, I go to the, um, the faith community this Saturday, I can go there. Um, and, um. Uh, I lost my I, my sewing needle though. I had one one sewing needle which I lost, so I have a couple of uh, pants that I'd like to uh, sew. Like I have my my pair my brown pair of slacks. These pants, these ones. All of a sudden they uh, I wore them. I think it was the day before yesterday. All of a sudden they have a hole in the in the back. Just a hole. You know I th I real you know I saw. Since the start of this year, some of my clothes have gotten routinely holes. All of a sudden, they develop holes. Especially my nightgowns and stuff like that. But this, these pair of pants, <laughs> I noticed that. Just noticed this when I came home the other day. From the, I guess it was a shop right. Now all of a sudden, there's a hole. And this is like, this is right. See, that's the left pocket. So it's right on the on the back there so I don't know I was gonna sew, sew that and then I realized I don't have my sewing needle because I kept it in my pocketbook and I was like looking for something in a rush and I think I just uh, misplaced it somewhere I'm not really sure but um, and I also had like two two spools of thread now I have like a half a spool of blue thread I had a full spool spool of blue navy blue thread and now I just have a yeah, so anyway, but I don't have a needle, so I guess that's a moot point if you don't have any thread. So, um, I'm still looking for jobs. I haven't, uh, seen anything, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's the holiday season, so. Uh, it'll probably be more after the first that I might see something, but, um. I had some uh, other pants that, <laughs> but uh, that a few years ago I couldn't even get into them. I, you know, they were so tight on me. Now they're so loose, and I wanted to take them in. I don't have any belt. I had a belt uh, a while ago, but not currently. So.
interesting name to bring up. Now, Haley has been a part of a lot of organizations over the years. He was on the Jets staff with Bill Parcells, if you remember. He was Ken Wizenhut's offense coordinator, did a great job with the Cardinals, had a chance to coach with the Kansas City Chiefs, took the Chiefs to the playoffs. Following year, the team fell apart at the seams. They really had a lousy year. The problem I have with Todd Haley, he's a guy who ropes people the wrong way. And that may work, Andy. It may be a nice little contrast compared to what the Jets had here with Rex Ryan. But it's also a volatile hire, and it could end up blowing up in your face and being a disaster. I think it's worth having a conversation. He's done a good job with the Steelers offensively, but he does have a quirky personality. I don't know if it's suited for New York City. Now, well, one of the things with the honors is I'm thinking Adam Gay, like you said, that I've only been surprised by the head now, so I don't know who. Well, there's the that you mentioned in the last hour. Well, listen, I think any qualified coordinators had a good year is going to be right at the top of the list. So I'm sure the Jets are going to make a call to Adam Gates, like a, like you just said. They're going to make a call to Josh McDaniels, even though I would say he's the front runner for the job in Atlanta, considering that he has ties to both Peoli and Thomas Dimitra from their days with the Patriots. You make a call to Quinn. You make a call to Todd Bowles, who coached on the Jets staff many moons ago with Bill Parcells or was a part of many staffs over the years. He's been with Arizona. He's been with Miami. He's been with the Jets. You look up and down the league. Todd Bowles has been coaching, deserves a chance to coach in this league and be a head man. But to me, I'm looking at qualified offensive coordinators and qualified personalities, too. That's another thing, Andy. You can't just be a smart offensive mind. You've got to have that sort of personality to be able to handle New York. And I'm not saying you got to be Rex Ryan, but you also have to be a guy who has a little bit of flair, who at least understands the New York media. You can't be combative and expect to succeed in this market. And then my last question to you is, had they gotten rid of Rex Ryan's play 12 weeks and they could have made a good player for Darius that year? It's a great point. I don't know the answer to that question, Andy. I don't know what the thought process would have been for Woody Johnson and company if they decided to part ways with Rex Ryan in 2012. Now, Arians was a candidate. Arians ended up taking the job in Arizona. Would you love to have Bruce Arians as your head coach right now? Of course you would. And Arians would be a rock star in New York. Oh, my goodness. He'd be such a rock star in New York. With those hats he wears, with the glasses, with the personality, with the confidence. But it's not over the top. It's not arrogance. It's like a swagger with Bruce Arians. And I love the job he's done with the Arizona Cardinals. And, yeah, if you're a Jeff fan, it's a shame. You can't bring him in. But I can't play the what-if game. What you can worry about now is if you're a Jet fan, what are you going to do about your team? What are you going to do about your GM, your head coach, and your quarterback? Let's head out to Long Island. Marty joins us on the fan. Hey, Marty, good morning. What's going on? Good morning, JJ. Uh, JJ, I've been a, uh, you had mentioned earlier that one of the people that you would consider for the Jet coaching job is Brian Kelly. Well, let me enlighten you. One of my best friend's sons, Played for Notre Dame for three years. I've been a Notre Dame fan for over 60 years. And Brian Kelly would be about the biggest mistake you could think of. Number one, he does not have the temperament to be a professional head football coach. The guy yells like crazy. And secondly, he just the NFL coaches yelling on the sideline. Not the way he does, because I know how really bad it is. Have you seen Tom Kelly? Nope, she's not doing nothing. She's not doing nothing. All right. 
Yeah. So it's 10 minutes uh, already, so what's for this other guy? Any coach known to man for an in-game call. Are we gonna mock Bill Belichick? Do you remember fourth and two against the Indianapolis Colts? It was the wrong call. Fourth and two at like his 30 yard line. Okay. Inside of four minutes, he went for it, they didn't get it, they won the game. Remember Kevin Falk was like a yard short? I remember that as well as anyone. And we remember that when it comes to Bill Belichick. Of course we don't. Brian Kelly is an unknown in the NFL. I have no idea what he can do as far as being an NFL coach. But he has never been. The guy has won in every level. Cincinnati. Central Michigan. Notre Dame. He wants to go coach. He wants to be an NFL coach. I'll run a team. I'd be willing to give him an opportunity. Eight seven seven three three seven sixty six sixty six. We're going to go to Dutchess County. What's going on, Joe? Hey, good day. I just wanted to say something else. I was thinking for somebody a lot like Conklin, uh, to come in. He's had experience. He's been to the Super Bowl. You know, his last shot was a was a, a tough situation because he was uh, kind of he had a lot of more battery. Where are you going? Where are you going with that? Oh, let me just say, show you. Uh, oh, here's Moxie over here. Let's see. Let's see. Mox! Moxie! Moxie, look!
So then we have uh, sausages eating here. So I have, uh, I still have uh, food. I have, um, I just opened a new one yesterday. So I have this uh, container. I have this container. Um, I just filled it yesterday. Um, it's 25 pounds container. And I have, um, uh, I have this. I have, still have two 22 pound, two 22 pound, two 22 pound, one, two. So that's uh, pretty good. So I'll just have to see, you know, I'd like to, um, I'll need a litter pretty soon. I have, uh, the second, um, uh, Litter I bought. Cat's Pride, two jugs of Cat's Pride, which was, uh, which were, um, let's see. Here's Jack down here. Uh, I have two jugs of this one. I just opened the other one. This is, uh, how many pounds is this? Uh, 20 pounds. 20 pounds. I have two jugs. The one I just opened. Jack! So he was like, just like, he just like starts attacking. I mean, starts biting or fighting with other cats. He was doing that to Simon just before. So I don't know what. Oh, so I moved the the because the, they kept sitting on this lawnmower and I didn't like that. So yeah, uh, so I moved it out here. It's out here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right. It's right there. So so they won't be sitting on that anyway when they come out here. <laughs> See, that's getting tangled up right there. Yeah, I want this one. Yeah, so I, I noticed that, like, I just now, that commercial on, and he wouldn't let go. Moxie wouldn't let go. I wanted to, well, you go to take the, take their paw away from the, the, uh, the end of the string so you can pick up the toy, and then they grab it again. Yeah, so it's a little battle that way. And he, Moxie, and he just goes in here and just sits in here. He didn't used to be like that. So I guess, Joe, I guess you can't come in here, Joe. Because your puppet masters won't let you in. There we go. Yeah, Joe. <laughs> okay. Jack boy. Jack. Hey, Jackie boy. Jack. Jack boy. So I have a... Uh, uh, oh, what I have to... You know, what I have to eat? Yeah, I have... Um, uh, <laughs> I know. 
Yeah, I have enough to eat. I have enough to eat, too. I have enough to eat. Basically, you know, and it was my own fault, basically. As far as, like, say, for example, the Faith Community Food Bank, you can uh, go there twice a month. You can take as much bread, as much bread and produce as you want. And I wasn't really taking enough. So that was in part the reason why. Previously, you know, I might have been a little, um, you know, short or running low, uh, you know, on food in between visits. But, you know, so last time I went, I did take, you know, did that. <laughs> it took as much as I wanted. So, you know, so. Okay, so, um. So where's Simon then? I didn't see Simon here, did I? He's another guy who won't play and used to play, but he doesn't play now. So I don't know why. So where's Simon then? Oh, Sam. Sam. She's here. An accident. So the lanes so are closed Simon? and detoured. A southbound right lane will be closed as well. Uh, here heading into the city, the George still pretty quiet on the upper lower level. Collins Lake and Tunnel City bound. No reported problems. Uh, Parking rules need rules will be in effect for no, today. No, it's not under there. Same weather for today. Highs of 38 degrees. Oh, Currently 34 degrees in Central Park. My name is Simon. Where's Simon? Oh, there he is. Ha, <laughs> this is right. He was under there when pining behind the towels. Simon! Where are Simon? Where are Simon? JJ after dark. John Zastrzewski, long for the ride here with you on the fan number to get involved. 877 The Moose, Kim Jones in for Boomer and Courtney coming your way at 6. Simon. Vince, down in Charlottesville. What's going on, Vince? Good morning, JJ. Happy New Year to you and yours. Thank you, Vince. Much appreciated. What's happening? Hey, with the key man, with Coughlin staying, who's going to be leaving if anybody leaves? What do you think they should do with their ninth round pick? I like to see <laughs> start building a wall around Eli. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, so let's see. Um, so let's, so like I said, with this other tunnel, I can use it. <laughs> you just wait, are you still in here, Moxie? Moxie, you're in here? Okay, Moxie, I'm taking, I'm taking this tunnel outside, Moxie. You want to stay in it? Oh, he came out. All right. I like the crinkly, and they like the crinkly thing. I could never find one like this with the wire, you know, um, stands to so that it'll, that'll stay uh, open. I found one that was just a collapsible one, but it was too, it wouldn't stay open. So I wanted one that was longer, but I couldn't find one. Uh, anyway. I'm not serious. I'm not
You wouldn't want to put too much stock in what the Jets are doing as far as these first rounds of the interviews, because even though they were interviewing Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator of the Seattle Seahawks, doesn't mean number one, he's going to get the job, and number two, it doesn't mean he should be hired before you bring in a new job. <laughs> <laughs> What happened, Joe? Joe! <laughs> Come here. Okay, um. All right, it's still going, still going. Yeah, the battery compartment opened up, but it, I just shut it. Well, I think you're spot on, Brian, with both of those points. I think if you're the New York Jets, number one, you do want to prioritize GM. So where did you want to hire uh, your GM first. Other and thing you do though. need to go out there and bring in a football See, I, I go from room to room with my toys, and then I just misplace them. I think this is uh, out here, right? All right, so uh, my toy, uh, my laser toys with my keys, and my uh, smaller wand toy. I, I don't see them right now. All right, I'm not finding it right now. So, um, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that they have not had great offensive coaches and they've okay. not had a great game plan. I'm not finding it. It's not here right now. Let's see. No, it should be here somewhere. I shouldn't have to hunt like this for it. Okay, so it's not here. No, it's not here. All right, so it's not here. Okay, more later. I will uh, attend this when I find the toys, which I'm sure I will. This is 29 minutes. 